Every month, I encourage a group of hackers to teach a thing or two about a thing or two at um, a, what is called a Linux user group meeting, but could more accurately be described as a uh, hacker space without an actual place to, to do things. Um, <clears throat> Today, I'm going to tell you about, about planning meetings, getting motivating people to attend these meetings, and how to and increase and making sure you actually have people attending these meetings. Okay. Uh, in addition, uh, so some some background here. I have been involved in my local Linux user group community since 2003, and in the last year and a half, I involuntarily became president which made me responsible for making people, making sure people meet and have a place to talk and making sure people know where to meet because that's, that can be a problem, like people showing up at the wrong place and so on. So, the meetings that, the, the important thing to know about having technical meetings is all of the people, a conference like this is different because people pay money to come, come here, but a Linux user group meeting you have no money and <clears throat> um, no one really wants to come. So you have to make sure that you make the meetings interesting. And if you don't make the meetings interesting, then your attendance drops and there's no real point for you spending so much time haggling with local businesses to give you a place to meet. However, there's certain rewards to having a, a good community and, and regular meetings. For one thing, you can't know everything, and because you can meet with other people that know stuff that you don't know, you can talk to them and hopefully learn things that you can't learn from books. And you will get the benefit um, that, unlike IRC, people can ex actually explain to you things to you using their hands, or drawing pictures, or actually just doing it for you. Hey, my uh, I managed to make it so that my this old spark box that I got out of the dumpster doesn't boot. Do you know how to make it boot? And then someone's like, oh, oh it's, they need to resolder this capacitor. So, a little bit of a, a little segue into history. As I said, I have been involved in, in my local geek community since about 2003. And in January 2003, I sent out an email saying, hey, do you have meetings in my city to the local group, which had meetings in a city that was nearby, but not exactly close for a 17-year-old with no car. And they sent back a response. Yes, there's meetings in St. Pete, um, but uh, and there's going city close to me. So I'm like, oh great, I'll go to the meeting. So I went to a meeting, and someone talked about something I didn't know, um, which was what was it? It was VNC through an SSH tunnel, which probably sounds really old because no one really uses VNC. There's other things. I mean, unless you're in Linux, there's still VNC, but it, there's people usually use our desktop and so on. So that was my first experience in watching other people talk about technology in person. And then April 2003, the meeting coordinator for this meeting says, I am going to Vegas. I'm not, the meeting is going to be canceled. And I go, oh, well, that's disappointing. He says, well, you can organize it. And I go, really? He says, yeah, just give a talk about something. So I'm like, okay. So I gave a talk in April 2003. Fast forwarding. And through October 2006, the meeting through 2007, um, the meeting coordinator just gave up, and so I started running the meetings, unofficially. However, this pissed off the president, quote, president of the log, who said to knock that off. So I forked it. You know, uh, you don't like something, you fork it. And in this fork, I called it Pinellas Unix people. Pinellas, by the way, is the county in which I dwell. And it had the acute name of Pup, so it sort of stuck. However, um, what ended up happening is the president gave up of the, the luck. He's like, I'm not doing this anymore. Someone else should do it. And this happened in the evening, and I, I didn't, wasn't involved. And someone suggested, hey, you know, Dylan should do it. Dylan, Dylan's like, going to presentations and, and run the, the Pinellas meeting for this long, and he has this unofficial thing, so he should do it. And then so I woke up in the morning, and I check, and I go, I get an email from, from the guy, his name is Paul, he says, hey, you need to migrate uh, the mailing list off of their hosting provider, which was a hosting provider called NKS, which no longer really exists. Their servers are still up, and we still had stuff on them, but like only one guy that worked there, that knew about us was still working there, and they were like out of business. 
So in the same couple of days, I had to uh, dump a major, major domo mailing list over to Mailman, which was kind of annoying. Um, so bringing this up, I've now, since June of 2010, been responsible for making sure people meet. Uh, in addition to this, I should add as some background information that we have two meetings now. We have one meeting that's rather far, rather far from where I live, and another meeting which is close to where I live, which is, was originally unofficial. The, the perks of being put in charge of the group is that my unofficial meeting became official. So, since then, I think that I've grown our group. Our meetings were averaging 20. Uh, 20 people was a good meeting. We now get 35. I think we've had one meeting where we had 40 people, which was phenomenal considering the area. And uh, the things I've gotten right were predictable repeating meetings. Meetings are never canceled. If a meeting's going to be on a particular day, it's going to be on that day. If our location flakes out, then we put a notice near the location, like on the door of the building, saying, we're not here because this reason, we're across the street, we're at the Starbucks, so on. Uh, meetings are also on the same day of the month, which is say, to, to say it's the third Wednesday, second Wednesday, first Friday, things like that. We actually use two of those because we only have two meetings. Consistently having topics, people don't come to meetings if you don't know what they're going to talk about. For instance, if I just randomly said that this was a talk about stuff, very few people would show up, although we did have that at the last OPW, and people did show up. But for monthly meetings where people are, are just going to come in, they're not doing really anything interesting, they're not going to take the time to do it, especially right after work on, on a weekday. The other thing is finding interesting guests. I've been extremely lucky in this regard. We. Um, there's a person that apparently was born in the city that I'm from who is a physicist at the Stanford Linear Accelerator place. His name is Paul Coons, and he visits his family over the holidays every year, and um, not every year, but frequently we get him to come and talk about stuff, and he's notable for being the first person to turn on a web server in North America. So. Luckily, we've had him and, and some other people. And going over the list of this is important. But the important thing is find interesting people near you and get them to talk. And if there's no interesting people near you, then find someone that's doing something interesting or at least has a passion about something. Engaging new members. This is where it gets tricky because how many, I mean, it, it, luckily my group is a little bit less specific than a, a Perl conference. I don't just need to find, I can let Python people come. I can let hardware hackers in. We have several people that are doing projects on it. We know they'll come and, and talk about wiring into the other circuits and making doorbells so that it electrocute the dog with a shock collar when, no, not really. Um, social cohesion. What I mean by this is don't, if you're going to go through the trouble of doing this, you're going to end up uh, enlarging your circle of friends, or, or acquaintances perhaps, I mean, it's more of an acquaintance thing, but you're going to know these people. And frequently after meetings, a group of us, actually sometimes as many as half the people, so at, at a 30 person meeting, 15 people, we'll get together and go out to a bar or a, or a restaurant and just talk for another couple of hours. Frequently on meeting nights, I don't get home until like 11. Um, and I think that this is potentially good because you have connected with similar minded people. I've had a number of extremely interesting failures as a leader of this group. The first failure was the fact that I forgot to automate the mailing of the mailing list rules, which is not terribly important because I don't really have any friend that violates them. We're all, we're all older. I'm probably one of the youngest people in the group, and I'm 26, so there's not a whole lot of, of trolling, luckily. A failure to communicate, uh, I've actually failed at communicating meeting changes, which is something you should never do. That's gotten better. A failure to delegate, there are usually, if you have a large enough group, there's going to be people that want to help you, and you need to let them help you. If you don't let them help you, then you're a horrible leader. And that's really bad if you're, you're only a leader in name because you're not like an actual organization. And the final failure is the failure to integrate. There are other groups in the area, including a, a Perlmongers group, which, you know, that, those, there's no, well, there's only one local here, that I believe. Um, he doesn't, he's not very good at actually having meetings, but nevertheless, I have a good working relationship with him. He's a former, a former boss and friend, and 
theoretically, we could have events where we have Perl people and, and other Linux hacker people meet and, and do stuff. This hasn't actually happened, but I think that if there are any other groups in the area, and your group is more general, especially you need to, to try to work with them. Uh, oh, we also have a partnership with the PHP group, which is interesting because my, my group is noticeably Perl-centric because of me, and I kind of encourage people to learn Perl subliminally. But we still have a PHP group that intermingles with us. Um, so things that I want to work on and things that you should work on if you want to work on groups in your area are you need to uh, things that need to remain in place for me are I have a list of upcoming topics at the beginning of the year I try to figure out this is kind of grandiose but I try to figure out generally what we're going to talk about in a given month really involve things my work schedule is usually fairly open the first month or two of the year so I, I do big things then like um, recently I did a talk on I prepared a talk on doing VTRFS uh, which is an advanced Linux file system on top of uh, over two drives and, and, and our fresh install and I'm not going to bore you with the details. <clears throat> Keeping up the interesting guests. So when you have someone that talks, say you get this person uh, named Bob who uh, is an interesting speaker because he used to do the cooling system for Prey computers. Um, this is actually not far from the truth of the talker I've had. Um, make sure you communicate and reach out to them so that they know that you want them to come back because even if you've seen them, you never know when you're going to get a new person at the meeting that would benefit from this, this guy rehashing his old war stories. <clears throat> Membership drive. And flyers and things in, in the appropriate areas can help bring in new members. More importantly, it can be word of mouth or, or even the creation. I, I like to think of this creation. When you know someone that's uh, kind of technical, but they don't really participate in events, you can create a new hackery uh, person out of them by getting them interested enough to come to a meeting. And then the next thing you know, they um, soldered something onto their TV to uh, illegitimately gain um, uh, satellite signals. Not that that's happened. <clears throat> and here is where I um, talk random gibberish uh, for a second because there should be other things there. Now, things that need to change. These are also things that may apply to getting yourself set up. Have automated mailings uh, about when your meetings are every week. Seems to be pretty good. People like it. Even if they, if you send them out at the beginning of the month, or even if your meetings are always on the same day, people will forget. But if they get a frequent mailing about it, uh, they will either spam, mark you as spam and report your ISP, or they will um, remember to attend your meeting. Or they might do both. <clears throat> Delegation. It's very, very important to delegate if you're actually not just alone. If you're alone and you know no other technical people in your area, I've been there, uh, and you really need to find someone else first, and you guys can delegate. It's just two of you can delegate back and forth. Which can, uh, Anyone that's here that's married can know that two-person delegation can actually work out, because, you know, I don't want to do this. Well, I don't want to do this. Let's trade. It ends up working out. Like, I don't want to print flyers and go to uh, random places in town and staple them. Moving beyond mailing lists, uh, to reach out to new people, I think that it will be important for me to use things other than mailing lists because while I like mailing lists and the good majority of people that we have use mailing lists, a lot of younger people are not as comfortable with them. Uh, and I, if you still want to get them involved and, and doing cool things, then it may be important to reach out to them other ways, such as Facebook or some kind of forum. Uh, I've actually had a lot of success. I actually gained something like 15 new people by spending 50 bucks on a Facebook ad for our group, which I thought was amazingly effective. And they've actually, of those 10, 15 people, many of them have consistently been back to meetings. And now I was going to speak in tongues, which I was unable to practice, so you can insert that maybe in the audio track later. Uh, that's... Yes. Uh, proper English? Yes. Worcestershire. I can say that. I wouldn't say my English proper English. Oh yeah, you don't sound like the BBC. So, um, we're actually just basically have five, four or five minutes left, which is much less than I was thinking. Is there any questions? Um, conversation? Objections? Um, 
Uh, none, none, so no success yet, but I've only done that once. Okay. I'm also going to go up there. There's so a, a computer repair building that I just noticed on a fairly major street near where I live. It actually has a penguin, a large penguin, painted on the side of it. It has the Windows thing, it has a Mac logo, and has a lot much larger than all those penguin painted on it. And I don't know who owns that store, who works there. And that's a problem. I need to. I think I need to know them because they probably don't know about our meetings and, and should. That would be quite good. If you get a post or a mm -hmm. flyer, uh, yeah. Well, I could put. Yeah, I could hand them out, hand flyers out there because they might actually know it. Have other people in the store. It's really weird. This the tech community, especially where I live, is very segmented. There's an Ubuntu users group that doesn't even interact with us, despite the fact that this group that I'm uh, in charge of has technically been around since '93. So it, it's it's kind of Weird how the lack of communication. Um, uh, the tech groups who failed to want to integrate. Yeah, they, they basically that's what I'm experiencing is the, the Ubuntu group doesn't want to talk to us. And apparently, there's another Linux user group that I don't even know if they have meetings. So they have a website, and their website's been up for about five years. Mm -hmm. And I've sent emails to the to them, and they I haven't really responded. So. Uh, and when and all the fail, and there's also a meetup group. Speaking of that, that I've actually posted on their thing, and they had meetings according to the meetup group, and they also never responded to my inquiry. And I don't understand. I don't understand why, because uh, it's not like it's. The same thing. I didn't want to speak to it for pizza. And they were like, "Why should we go?" Yeah. <laughs> any other reason? <laughs> would be better for free pizza. Exactly. We usually don't have the budget to, to give out. Oh, this, this, this was a one off of the sort of, you know, all the tech groups in the area, let's just get together and have a, have a laugh. And it's like, no, we don't want to do that. You're, you're coming us, somehow we'll come to you. You'll you're fill them with and you'll, you'll inject us with pearl. Well, not all the pearl, but some people did. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and, and what I wanted to say in conclusion, we kind of forgot, is I hope I've, some of you that don't have technical groups, I've given you a desire to go out and try to form them in your area, especially if you can give them a pearl slant, but even if not. And if you're part of an existing group, then help it grow, because it's honestly, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't know half the stuff I know now if it weren't for leaning on other people. There's a couple of things that I haven't tried, but I'm definitely going to try. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very useful. I also know I really love Intel hardware, especially latest drivers I have on the on